Okay, good day again. Okay, and so yes, let's take a look at your connective tissue. Okay. For our objectives, of course, let's we will be taking a look at your connective tissue, the types of connective tissue, the function, and the organ location of these tissues. Okay. Your connective tissue, this one will support, will connect, and separate different tissues and organs. They are found throughout the body, including the bones, the blood, the cartilage, and the adipose tissue. And yes, this one develops from your mesenchyme. This, your mesenchyme is an embryonic type of tissue. Okay, and so for your embryonic connective tissue, they are also present in the umbilical cord and in the pulp of developing teeth accordingly. And yes... It consists of cells and extracellular matrix. Your extracellular matrix of your connective tissue, of course, consists of connective tissue fluid, the ground substance, which, of course, uh, which are embedded with a protein, different protein fibers like your collagen, your elastic, and your reticular fibers, okay? Of your connective tissue, they provide support, okay? and so they provide structural framework. Okay, and so examples of this one, you have your bones, your bones, and your cartilage. They bind tissues together also. Examples, of course, you have your tendons and ligaments. And then they also protect, they caution and protect your organs, like your, the functions, or the ones that is, that are, that are actually done by your adipose tissue and your bone. And they also transport fluids and nutrients. Via they also transport fluids and nutrients. Of course, example is you have your blood. Please note that your blood is a liquid connective tissue, and then you have they store energy in the form of fat. A good example is your adipose tissue. Okay, and so your cells in the connective tissue, please note that fibroblasts and adipose cells are permanent or resident connective tissue cells accordingly. Your neutrophils, your eosinophils, and then the rest, okay, and so they migrate from the blood vessels and take residence in the connective tissue of different regions of the body, okay? <clears throat> Let's take a look at uh, this one. Your fibroblasts, they are fusiform shape. And uh, the function is they synthesize all of the connective tissue fibers and the extracellular ground substance. Okay, and so they synthesize your collagen fibers. They synthesize the rest of your <laughs> extracellular com uh, matrix components. Okay, and so your adipocytes, they store fat. And they have a predominant, the predominance of adipocytes in a tissue, if there is a predominance of adipocytes in the tissue, then you call the tissue as adipose tissue. And then you have your macrophage. These are phagocytic cells and are most numerous and loose connective tissue. Okay, and so of course, this macrophage, they are derived from circulating blood monocytes that take up residence in the connective tissue. Okay, and so please note that macrophage, they have specific names in different organs. Okay, and so you have your tissue macrophage. Okay, and so in the liver, the macrophage are called as Kupfer cells. In the bone, the macrophage are called as osteoclast. And in the central nervous system, you have your microglia. Okay, and so in your tissues, you have your histiocytes. These are your tissue macrophage um, accordingly. Okay, and so your mast cells, mast, they are closely associated with blood vessels accordingly. They are widely distributed in the connective tissue of the skin and in the digestive and respiratory organs. Okay, and so what is the function? I mean, they are, what you call this, your mast cells, they are spherical cells they, that are filled with fine, regular, dark staining and basophilic granules accordingly. Okay, and so and then you have your plasma cells. These plasma cells mediate immune responses to antigens that enter the organs by producing antibodies. And of course, okay, and so these ones arise from lymphocytes that migrate into the connective tissue. Your neutrophils and your eosinophils, they migrate into the connective tissue from the blood vessels accordingly. And what is the function? They defend the organism against bacterial invasion of foreign matter. Okay, and so please note that your neutrophil, 
eunotrophil is an active and powerful is an active and a powerful phagocyte. Okay, and so this one will engulf and destroy bacteria at the sites of infections. While your eosinophils, okay, and so they are active and increase in number after parasitic infections. Okay, and so please note your eosinophils they are associated with parasitic infections and allergic reactions. Okay, and so what will they do? They are also capable of phagocytosing antigen antibody complexes formed during allergic reactions. That is for your the difference of your eosinophil and your neutrophil accordingly. Okay, and so this one is an illustration of your cells. You have your, your fusiform shaped fibroblast, you have your plasma cells, your adipose cell, adipocytes, your large lymphocytes, your macrophage, your mast, okay, your small lymphocyte, okay, your neutrophil, and then your AUC nephil. No? And so please note of the orange pigment, or I mean orange granules of your AUC nephil, okay? And then you have your fibrocyte. Your fibrocyte is the inactive fibroblast accordingly. Okay, and so let's take a look at the fibers. Your fibers and the connective tissue you have here. <clears throat> accordingly, you have the collagen fibers, you have uh, reticular and elastic fibers accordingly. Please note that the amount and arrangement of fibers in the connective tissue depend on the function of the tissues or organs in which they are found accordingly. Okay, and so you have your collagen fibers, you have your type 1, these are found in the dermis of the skin, tendons, ligaments, and bone. And yes, they are very strong and offer great resistance to tensile stresses. Okay, while your type 2 collagen, they are present in hyaline cartilage and elastic cartilage. And yes, these fibers, these collagen fibers, your type 2 collagen fibers, provide resistance to pressure. And then you have your type 3. They form the delicate supporting meshwork in organs like the spleen, the bone marrow, and then the lymph nodes accordingly. Okay, and so for your collagen, type 3 collagen fibers and your type 4, finally, your type 4 collagen fibers, these are present in the basal lamina of the basement membrane. Please note that you have more than 20 types of collagen fibers. Okay, and so but then hanggang dito lang tayo ngayon. Okay, let's take a look at your types of your connective tissue. Please note that your connective tissue, they are classified as either loose connective or dense connective depending on the amount, the type, arrangement, and abundance of cells, fibers, and ground substance. Okay, and so for your areolar connective tissue, this one underlies your epithelial tissue. It surrounds small nerves and blood vessels and this one has structures and functions that are shared by other connective tissues no okay and so your areolar connective tissue borders all other tissues in the body accordingly okay you have your connective tissues you have your loose connective tissue again this your connective tissue is classified as either loose or dense depending on the amount the type and arrangement and presence or abundance of cells together with your fibers and ground substance, okay? And so for your loose connective tissue, this one is further classified into three, your areolar, your reticular, and your adipose. And then your dense connective tissue is further uh, classified. You have your regular, your dense regular, your dense irregular, and then your dense elastic accordingly. Okay, and so let's take a look at your structures within the areolar connective tissue. Of course, this will allow to support and bind other tissues together, hold body fluids, defend body against infection, and will this one, it will store nutrients as fats. Okay? 
Yung areolar connective tissue, this, it has a gel-like matrix with all the three types of fiber. Okay, you have your collagen, your reticular, and elastic, and this one will function for support. Now, the ground substance is made by glycoproteins, also made and secreted by your fibroblast. Okay, and so please note again of your, glyco of your ground substance, the cells, you have your fibroblast, your macrophage, your mast, and your WBCs accordingly. Okay, and so this one is an illustration of a an areolar connective tissue. Okay, and so this is loose. Okay, and so it is a loose connective tissue. And yes, your areolar is widely distributed under the epithelia. And yes, it packages your organs and surrounds your capillaries. Okay, and so please note again here that you have a very few organs, very few fibers. You have few fibers, okay, in your areolar connective tissue uh, since it is a loose connective. Moving on, let's take a look at your adipose. Your adipose tissue, you have closely backed adipocytes and they have nucleus that are pushed to one side by fat droplet. Okay, and so and the function it will provide, uh, provide reserve food fuel. It will insulate against heat loss and supports and protects organs accordingly. For your tissue location, these ones are located under the skin, around the kidneys, behind the eyeballs, and the abdomen and in the breasts accordingly. Okay, and so that is for your adipose tissue. Okay, and so you have two types accordingly for your adipose, you have the brown and the white one. For the brown one, these are seen particularly in your newborn mammals and some hibernating animals accordingly. And in your humans, they are exclusively found in the adrenals. Okay, and so for this brown adipose tissue, it is rich in mitochondria and specialized for generation of heat. And with that, it plays a part in body temperature regulation accordingly. That is for your brown adipose tissue. Okay, and so this is an illustration of your brown adipose tissue. Your adipose tissue, your white adipose tissue, this one is distributed throughout the body, particularly in the deep layers of the skin. Okay, and so this type of adipose tissue comprises up to 20% of total body weight in normal, well-nourished male adults and up to 25% in females. But no, and so, but can reach more than 50% in case of obese individuals. Okay, and so with this, it will function for uh, triglyceride storage and mobilization accordingly. Okay, and so with this, your uh, white adipose tissue, structural feel, it fills in spaces such as pelvic and perirectal areas in the axilla, and it contributes in sculpting body shape and outline. Okay, and so, <clears throat> and yes, it acts as thermal insulator under the skin and forms part of shock absorbing absorbing padding okay and so for this one well. this one is an illustration of an adipose of tissue okay and so please note that the nuclei is pushed okay and so accordingly okay and so the nuclei is pushed at the periphery no okay and so this ones here these are not spaces these are accordingly fats Okay, and so another, this one, you notice the nuclei are pushed at the periphery again. Okay, and so this one, this uh, white one here, okay, and so the space here, this is a fat droplet. This one contains fats. Okay, and so let's take a look at your connective tissue, your reticular connective tissue. This one is a network of reticular fibers in loose ground substance. Okay, and so it forms a soft internal skeleton that is your stroma and supports other cell types accordingly. Okay, and so this the, this is located in the lymphoid organs. You have your lymph nodes, your bone marrow, and the spleen. Okay, and so this is an illustration of a reticular connective tissue okay and so locate location they are again located in your bone i mean blood producing organs 
Okay? Let's take a look at your dense. Your dense regular. Your dense connective tissue further subdivided into regular, irregular, and elastic. Okay? And so your dense regular connective tissue, they are present in areas where great tensile strength is required like your tendons and ligaments. Okay? And so in this case, you have your dense regular connective tissue. They are primarily parallel collagen fibers. Okay? And so you have your fibroblasts are present in some elastic fibers. And yes, it is poorly vascularized. No? In your in your in your dense connective tissue you have more of collagen fibers or fibers than your cells accordingly. Okay, so this connective tissue attaches muscle to mus muscle to bone, sorry, your con your dense regular connective tissue attaches muscle to bone and bone to bone. And yes, this one withstands great stress in one direction since it is parallel. Okay, and so your tissue location for this one, again, you have your tendons and ligaments. Okay, and so with this one, of course, okay, and so they offer gr strong resistance to forces pulling along a single axis or direction. Okay, and so other parts you have your aponeurosis, is the fascia around your muscles. These are locations of your dense regular connective tissue. Moving on, this one is a histologic picture of your dense regular. Okay, and so notice the parallel arrangement. Okay, and so it will offer tensile strength in pulling in opposite direction. Okay, and so another one. Please notice the parallel arrangement of your fibers here, no? Okay. And yes, let's take a look at your dense irregular. Your dense irregular connective tissue consists primarily of your collagen fibers. Yes, with minimal amounts of surrounding ground substance and minimal cells. Okay, and so the collagen, except of course for fibroblast cells in this type of your connective tissue are sparse. Again, you have low okay count of cells low number of cells present in your dense tissues okay and so this one consists again predominantly of fibroblasts and collagen fibers that are randomly arranged unlike in your dense regular that are arranged in the fibers are arranged in parallel fashion in one axis or one direction okay and so this the collagen fibers exhibit great tensile strength and again their main function is for support okay and so these collagen fibers that are present in your dense irregular connective tissue exhibit random orientation again and are most highly concentrated in the areas of the body where strong support is needed to resist pulling forces from different directions. With that, it provides strength when forces are pulling from many different directions. Okay, and so that is for your dense irregular. Okay, and so this one is an illustration, a histologic picture of a dense irregular connective tissue. Okay, and so notice you have here different directions of the fibers okay and so your collagen fibers you have your fibroblast present and again notice the different directions of the fibers okay and so that is for your dense irregular okay and so moving on you have your cartilage your Cartilage, okay, and so your cartilage accordingly is a special form of connective tissue that also develops from your mesenchyme. Again, that is an embryonal type of connective tissue. And so similar to the connective tissue, this cartilage consists of cells and extracellular matrix. But then, please note that it has no blood vessels. It does not contain blood vessels or nerves accordingly, okay? And so you have... For this one, it does not contain blood vessels or it is non-vascular or a vascular. And how, what about how is, how does it nourish itself? Okay. How does this, how does this tissue nourish its, itself? Okay. And so it receives nutrition via diffusion through the extracellular matrix. Again, 
The nutrition is via diffusion through the extracellular matrix. Okay, and so please note that your cartilage, it is firm and a flexible tissue. With that, it exhibits a great tensile strength and provides firm structural support for tissues and allows flexibility without distortion and is resilient to compression accordingly. Okay, and so it can it. Uh, the cell type that is present for this one, you have your chondrocyte for this. Okay, and so the cells, the uh, cells in your cartilage, they are your chondrocytes and chondroblasts that synthesize the extensive extracellular matrix. And yes, you have three main types. You have here your hyaline, your elastic, and your fibrocartilage, okay? And so the classification, of course, is based on the amount, again, and type of connective tissue fibers that are present in their extracellular matrix, okay? And so your hyaline, this is imperceptible collagen. You have imperceptible collagen fibers. It is glassy, okay? And so this is actually the most common type, and in they are the most common type, no? And so in embryos, you have your hyaline cartilage serves as a skeletal model for most bones. And yes, as the individual grows, the cartilage bone model is gradually replaced with bone by a process known as your endochondrial ossification. Okay, and so it is what we call this calcified already. No, and so you have your chondroblasts that produce the matrix and your chondrocytes that lie in the lacunae accordingly. Okay, the function again it supports and reinforces and it provides resilient cushion and resists rep repetitive stress accordingly. Tissue location, fetal skeleton, end of long bones, coastal cartilage of ribs, cartilages of the nose, and trachea and your larynx accordingly. Okay, and so this one is an illustration of a hyaline cartilage. Notice your chondrocytes that are enclosed in a lacuna, lacunae. No, okay, and so your matrix, of course, the matrix, yes, that is made of fibers. Moving on, again, this one is another illustration. Histo histologic picture of your, uh, what you call this, your hyaline cartilage. Okay, and so notice the matrix and your chondrocytes present. Okay, and so let's take a look at your elastic. Your elastic cartilage, this one is similar to your hyaline cartilage, and okay. but then it is more it, more, it has more elastic fibers in the matrix. Okay, and so same, your elastic has a similar appearance in appearance to hyaline, except for the presence of numerous branching elastic fibers within the matrix. Okay, and so the elastic cartilage, please note that it is highly flexible. And this one can be found in the external ear, walls of the auditory tubes, epiglutis, and in the larynx. Okay, and so with that, it functions to maintain a shape and then allows great flexibility. Again, tissue location, you have your external ear and the epiglutis. Okay, and so you have here an illustration, a histologic picture of your... Uh, what you call this, your connective, sorry, your elastic cartilage, no? Okay, and so you have your cells, you have your ground substance, sorry, your extracellular matrix, okay, and so you have your elastic fibers with you, and then you have your uh, cells enclosed in a lacuna. Okay, and so you have again an illustration. Please note of the fibers, elastic, numerous elastic fibers present. And then, of course, you have your cells enclosed in a lacunae. Okay, then you have your fibrocartilage. Please note that your fibrocartilage has large amounts of irregular and dense bundles of coarse collagen fibers in the matrix. Okay, and so it is similar but then less firm than your hyaline cartilage. Okay, and so you have for this. <clears throat> uh, in contrast to your hyaline and your elastic cartilage, your fibrocartilage accordingly consists of 
alternating layers of collagen matrix and thick dense layer of type 1 collagen fibers. Okay, and so again, you have a thick collagen fiber that predominate accordingly. And the collagen fibers normally orient themselves in the direction of functional stress. Okay, and so with that, your fibrocartilage has a limited distribution and the body and is found in your intervertebral disc, your pubic symphysis, and your disc of the knee joint. Function, again, it functions to provide, to provide tensile strength and ability to absorb compressive shock accordingly. Okay, so this one is an illustration of your fibrocartilage. Another, and so for your fibrocartilage, okay, and so you have your control sites. Okay, and then yes, let's take a look at your haversion system. Okay, and so your haversion system, this is the fundamental functional unit of contact bone. Okay, and so you have your uh, structures present, the haversion canal that contains blood vessels, nerves and nerves, and it runs longitudinally. Your lamellae, these are concentric layers of calcified matrix that surrounds the haversian canal. And your laconae, <clears throat> these are small spaces between the lamellae that houses your osteocytes. And then your canaliculi, these are tiny channels that connect laconae and allows for nutrient and waste exchange between your osteocytes. Okay, and so, yes, your haversian system, this is the fundamental subunit of your bone okay and so please note that your bone is continually remodeled in response to mineral needs mechanical stress thinning or accordingly disease okay and so of course in your bone it maintains normal calcium levels in the blood that are that is actually critical to functions of numerous organs and life processes okay and so please note that your bone it supports and protects your organs it provides levers and attachment sites for your muscles it stores calcium and other minerals like phosphorus and accordingly it also stores fat okay and so your marrow is the site for blood cell formation and of course your location of your bone is in your bones Okay, and so your bones, these are highly vascularized to aid diffusion in the calcified matrix. Okay, and so your organic components of your bones that are present will resist tension, whereas your mineral components resist compression. Okay, and so your major component is your coarse type 1 collagen fibers. Your glycoprotein components bind to your calcium crystals during mineralization. And your hormones from your parathyroid and your thyroid glands, these ones are responsible for proper mineral content of the blood. Okay. And so your bone cells. Let's take a look your osteoprogenitor cells. These are located in the periosteum, endosteum, and osteans and perforating canals accordingly. Your osteoblasts, these ones are <coughs> located on the bone surfaces and they synthesize osteoid matrix. And your osteocytes, they maintain homeostasis of bone and blood concentrations of calcium and phosphate accordingly again and so for your osteoclast they are this are multi-nucleated cells responsible for resorption remodeling and bone repair accordingly yes this is an illustration of your bone okay and so you have your osteocytes that are present located in the lacunae okay and so another illustration of your another is histologic picture of your bone you have for this okay and so your osteocytes okay and so the endosteum and this is your marrow cavity accordingly okay and so another one that for your bone you have the canaliculi your haversian canal Okay, and so that is for your bone and yes, for your connective tissue.